So we spent six days traveling the Oregon coast, somewhere I've always wanted to go, and it did not disappoint. 360 miles of scenic landscapes, rocky cliffs, sandy beaches, and charming seaside towns. In this video, we'll show you the highlights on where to go, what's worth seeing, and hopefully give you a good starting point for your trip. Koda, it's your first camping. Yep, Koda, going to the States. Are you excited? And your first time out of the country. <gasps> Did you bring your passport? <gasps> <laughs> We started with a not so quick drive from Vancouver, Canada, stopped at the border, got stuck in Seattle traffic to finally get into the oldest town in Oregon. All right, so we're in Astoria. We're gonna explore this little town. Astoria is actually a really fun town. It's located on the very northwestern part of Oregon at the mouth of the Columbia River the start of the Oregon coast. When we seen downtown Astoria, we knew we had to stop and walk the streets. Downtown Astoria was a mix of restaurants, shops, and vintage buildings. It's small, but we ended up here. All right, Koda, we're at the museum here. Uh, yeah, the Maritime Museum, and because you're a doggo, they won't let you in. Now we gotta hide outside. All right, it's not your fault. <laughs> so we never did get to explore the Columbia River Maritime Museum, but from the outside, it looked interesting. Not sure if there's a river cruise you can take, but the museum is in the middle of downtown Astoria and it's hard to miss. After slowly walking the small streets of Astoria, we ran into the Custard King. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but it's perfect for a sunny day. Ooh, how is it? <laughs> oh, there you are. Oh yeah, you love ice cream. Yeah, you want more. If there's one thing I recommend you do in Astoria, that would be take the Astoria Riverfront Trolley. This was so cool. It's the original trolley carts that have been restored and still run along the Astoria waterfront. The trolley carts stop at almost anywhere important in Astoria, take about an hour round trip, and they give you neat tips and interesting history about Astoria. They even let us bring our pet on. It's by donation only, so tip well, and they run this only during the weekends, so plan accordingly. All right, so we're on day two of camping the Oregon coast. We're staying in a state park, so we're gonna check that out, and uh, yeah, we're gonna explore more Astoria and wander around here. So we were staying at Fort Stevens State Park. The park was great, so we decided to wander around and visit the most iconic thing in the park. All right, so this is the shipwreck, one of the most famous parts of this park. And we're gonna go check it out. So this is Shipwreck Beach located in Fort Stevens State Park. Literally a ship crashed here in 1906 as it tried to navigate the Columbia River. The remains are mostly gone, but the story alone is worth checking out. You likely won't spend a lot of time here. It was especially windy when we went, but it's definitely cool to get a few pictures here before it disappears. From there, we traveled to the far end of the park where we happened to stumble across the bird watching epic center of Fort Stevens State Park. Look, look at the birds. Is it birds? Look, is it birds? They fall. Oh, there's the bird, Coda. Right there. Can you see it? Ooh, it's flying, Coda. It is a viewing bunker. Whoa. What kind of bird is it, Coda? It's coming towards you, Coda. Although, I think Coda preferred playing around with the other dogs. Alright, our next stop, we're at this old military base. 
So we stopped here at Battery Russell in Fort Stevens State Park for lunch and to explore the decommissioned military base. It's free to wander around and explore all the underground rooms and gain insight into how the base operated. I could definitely see myself having fun running around here if I was a kid. <laughs> Our original goal though was to explore Fort Stevens historic area. Here you have to pay for parking if you're not camping in the park, but it's where most of the decommissioned military base is. It guarded the entry into the Columbia River dating all the way back to the Civil War to World War II. All the replica guns show just how large this base was, but the best way to see it would be to bring a frisbee and play the disc golf course. All right, so we're at the Astoria Column. Apparently it's got a good lookout point. It should look really nice up there. Let's check it out. So the Astoria Column, without a question, has the best lookout in the city. Built in 1926 to celebrate the city of Astoria, this free to walk up column goes 500 feet off the ground to give you a one of a kind view of Astoria. It's a 360 degree view of the entire area. And I definitely spent a while up here admiring the view. All right, so we're in Seaside, Oregon and we drove by, this town looks super cool so we had to check it out. So I seen videos on Seaside, Oregon before the trip, so I knew this was going to be a fun town to visit. If you're driving by, you'll definitely want to stop, walk the streets, and along the beats while you're here. So many unique shops, but of course, we had to get ice cream. He's expecting something. I know, he's waiting for it. <laughs> he's like, where's my ice cream? Oh yes, you're an ice cream monster. No! Look at this ice. Alright, so we're staying here in Cannon Beats, the right campground. Uh, we picked it because it's a block away from the beach here. Um, honestly though, you could probably stay anywhere in the area. Uh, seaside's super close and even Astoria is really close, so you got lots of options. Ta-da! The famous Cannon Beach, the big rock there. So this is Cannon Beach with Haystack Rock there in the background. This was the first ever picture I seen of the Oregon coast and what led us to take the journey here. It was pretty thrilling to finally see Haystack Rock in person and we weren't disappointed. It's just as large as it looks standing 235 feet above the shore. Ooh, this is good. Good morning, Mr. K. So the next day we had some exciting things planned that we 100% wanted to see. Alright so we're at Arcadia State Park here and we're heading down to the beach. It looks great so I've got to check it out. So Arcadia State Park was literally this little parking lot on the side of the highway. We almost decided to drive right past it but I'm glad we didn't. Arcadia Beach was stunningly beautiful. The rock formations were so picturesque and just miles of beats with no one there. We could have easily spent the entire day here. You know what? This sort of looks like a hand right here. <laughs> so after Arcadia Beats, I got a little confused on where everything was. We kept driving south in search of Indian Beach, which if you don't know, was in the completely opposite direction. <laughs> all right, so we probably passed this state park a couple times. This is Oswald West State Park. 
<laughs> so we settled on Oswald West State Park, named after the 14th governor of Oregon, who played a crucial role in keeping all of Oregon's beaches available to the public. The Oswald West Beach was nice. I think the beach is probably a good surfing spot, but we never tried it. Hold on, who's that over there? Alright, so I made it to Hug Point. I've seen some really good pictures of this online, so I'm excited to check it out. I'm gonna head down and see what it looks like. Hug Point State Beach, again, another beautiful beach. But I was actually in search of something specific here. I walked the entire beach and couldn't find it. One end to the other, so I was just about to give up, but I climbed the hill overlooking Hug Point Beach. And on the other side of the hill, I found it. Unfortunately, it was high tide, but down there, there's a waterfall, and that's Hug Point. We did eventually visit Ecola State Park. This is where Indian Beach was. It's the most famous state park in Cannon Beach, Oregon. It looks like it has some interesting hikes, and the viewpoints around here are supposed to be spectacular, but... So you're supposed to be able to see Cannon Beach and uh, all the rocks and everything along the shore, but it's too foggy, so I guess we'll have to keep going. What are you doing? Can you please wait? No! Wait! <laughs> Set us in the little home. I need to get the dirt off of you, then you can go in. Wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go check out Haystack Rock one last time before we leave. It's low tide, so it should be interesting. Oh, there's lots of people down there. So since it was our last day in Cannon Beach before we headed further south, we thought we should spend one last morning admiring Haystack Rock. There's definitely a different vibe when it's low tide. You're free to walk right up to it. There's people there to provide you lots of information and show you the wildlife that lives in and around Cannon Beach. One thing I've always been curious about when looking at Haystack Rock was how did it get here? And I later found out it was formed millions of years ago when the area was active with multiple volcanoes and then include weathering and erosion plus the ice aids all contributed to the looks of all the unique cliffs and rocks on the Oregon coast. All right, so we're just outside Tillamook and uh, we found this little fishery place right outside the city and check it out. Oh. oh man, that's a lot of food for two people. <laughs> All right, so I'm stoked to show you this one. I'm really excited about this. This is Tunnel Beach. You come right through the tunnel and you end up right here. So there's a few places I really wanted to check out and this one was near the top. I wasn't sure if I was gonna find it and we almost gave up, but we figured it out. We found ourselves at Oceanside Beach State Park, just outside Tillamook and there's a tunnel that leads you to Tunnel Beach. It's not the most private or sandy beach on the Oregon coast, but it probably gave us some of the best pictures on the entire trip. It's so worth the detour on any road trip. Okay, so I put down Short Beach on a list of destinations I really wanted to check out while I was in Oregon, and I couldn't remember exactly why I put it down, but since I was driving by, had to stop and check it out. I guess this was why. So right near Tunnel Beach, just down the road is Short Beach.
All right, we're making our way to the famous Tillamook Creamery. This should be good food here. <laughs> okay, so if you're going through Tillamook, apparently there's a world famous creamery. You can't miss it. This place is huge. And once we got in, it was packed inside. Uh oh, Anna, you know what you're doing yet? I never knew people got so stoked for cheese. <laughs> but yeah, you can even watch people on the assembly line. It did make me feel like I was a boss watching everyone work from above. <laughs> wow, that place was crazy busy, but we picked up a pint of ice cream. We're going to finish pasta this off. <laughs> Koda, you're going to help, right? He's like, hell yeah. <laughs> you have to try it first. He's like, I'm not. Oh man, he polished that off so quickly, Mr. K. How was it? Koda, how was it? It's gone. After polishing off a tub of ice cream, we knew we had to work it off. We were staying in Cape Lookout State Park, just outside Tillamook and decided we better see the viewpoint that the park's name after. A little confused if we were on the right trail since it seemed like a lot of the bush needed to be cut back, we slowly made it to our final destination. All right, so we made it. This is the lookout at Cape Lookout Park. This is what it's famous for. Check it out. All right, so we're on Cape Lookout Beach. Coda's with us. Coda, <laughs> look at that dirty boy. Anyways, the beach looks pretty good. It's high tide. The waves are really coming in right now. And that's our Oregon trip. Thanks for watching. Until later, I'll see you later.